I am going to talk a wee bit about um, the air march at the weekend. All very nice, all very friendly, all very much driven by Savo. And we'll get a wee bit more into muscular unionism and that in tomorrow's show because it's really um, important the way that the, um, the, the state is behaving towards Scotland at the moment. It's important. But what I was getting, uh, the vibe I was getting yesterday was that he, I saw him Saturday, was as I was walking around Pure Sound, who's sovereign, David? This is a pure sovereign. And then his speeches, one after another, about how the people were going to take their independence through this sovereignty. News flash, folks. And I'm not going to uh, uh, bring down the salvo day and, and researching the old constitution because it's going to be necessary when it comes to writing the modern version of it. But it is not the answer. You're looking at 20 to 25 years in the courts. Now, what I am going to explain to you folks here today, and as I say, this is no disrespect to Liberation Scotland or whatever it's called, Salvo, or the Scottish Constitution Research Group, all doing invaluable work, but none of them, none of them are the answer on how we are going to leave this union. And I am about to explain it. Sarah Sawyers has already agreed there's going to have to be some sort of um, vote. The constitutional expert, Professor Mark McNaught, who was on the two Davies the week before, Sarah, also agrees there's going to have to be some sort of vote. So if anybody's got a daft idea that Salvo in the 19, eh, sorry, the 1689 claim of right, or even the, the 1989 claim of right, or the 2018 claim of right, is going to make any difference, you're wrong. And I'll explain exactly to you, I'll explain to you exactly why. The 1998 Scotland Act was written in such a way that it reserved the Scottish Constitution to Westminster. It's quite cleverly what did the Constitution is reserved. What that actually states is that the Scottish Constitution is reserved to Westminster, specifically the Scottish Constitution. Because in 1953, in Cooper versus the Lord Advocate, it was noted that there are two different constitutional arrangements in the UK. When the Labour Party here in Scotland, or the Labour Party UK-wide, was forced to give devolution to Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland's got a different arrangement, they wrote those acts in such a way that reserved the Scottish Constitution to Westminster. That's why we have Section 30, that's why we have Section 3, Section 5, Section 30, Section 35 of the 1998 Scotland Act. It was specific to put barriers in front of our parliament along there exercising the sovereignty of the people of Scotland. The reason why the Supreme Court ruled that we would need to get a Section 30 order and permission from Westminster is because of the 1998 Scotland Act. The 1998 Scotland Act supersedes everything. The 2018 passing of the claim of right through Westminster, if you want to go back and have a look, folks, and Davies never rang in these things, it was a non-binding vote. Yep, they recognise the people of Scotland, but we're only, we're only sovereign on their terms because of the 1998 Scotland Act. Now, the work that Salvo's been doing on the Act of Salvo, hey, let me think now, 1663, I think it was, if I remember correctly, I've had that machine. And then the claim of right, in 1689. Um, these, these laws have been superseded by the Scotland Act. The Scotland Act, the way in 1998, is embedded into Scots law. So there is only one route open, and that is an election held by Westminster or an election held by the Scottish Parliament. The one in the Scottish Parliament, I don't know how easy it would be for that to be uh, recognised. The election in the UK Parliament well, we know that that's a route to independence because Margaret Thatcher told us in 1985 that if we wanted to be independent, just saying, a majority of SNP MPs from the Scottish Court to Westminster and you will be independent. And that's why when the Supreme Court came up with its ruling based on the 1998 Scotland Act, Nicola then turned to look towards a plebiscite election. And who's up is... Connie Hodge, a plebiscite election at the next election. That's why they're trying to shut down chat at the moment. 
They're trying to shut down chat at the moment and any work being done on Scottish independence along there. That's why we had Mr. Jack send the First Minister a letter. We've got a bit more out tomorrow. I don't really want to go too heavy in here until tomorrow. And that's why whom's I said to him, go and buy your heat, basically on television. What they're going to do is they're going to rewrite the civil service rules to prevent the civil servants here in Scotland, because remember, they're all paid through Westminster. It isn't really the Scottish civil service. To prevent them from making any further prospectus on independence. But if Jack and the idiots doing that road are so desperate that they think that will work, then they're running. You can't shut the people up. The one thing I will say is, the genie's out the bottle. That's the one bit that Mr. Salmon got right. The one bit. I'll emphasise that. The one bit he got right is the genie's out the bottle. He woke the population up. The rest of it made an absolute pig's ear. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. So when we're at these marches and rallies and people who think they're some sort of celebrity or well-known personality gets up and tells you this is the answer. Yeah, the people of Scotland are sovereign. But that sovereignty is centrally controlled by the 1998 Scotland Act. Which also recognises the sovereignty of the people of Scotland. That's why barriers were put in the way in the 1998 Scotland Act to stop the Scottish Parliament from exercising that sovereignty. That's why we call it the bastard child of Westminster instead of a proper parliament. But if anybody out there who's watching this programme actually believes that the work that they is being done by Salvo and that is the way out of this union, you're wrong. Sarah Sawyers and Professor Mark McNaught have both been on their programmes. You can look them up. They're all still listed to videos and they have admitted that they need be a ratification of the will of the people of Scotland. Coombs has decided that the best way to do that is the next general election because we already have it on record that that is the route to independence. We see Margaret Thatcher, it's in her memoirs, it was said in the parliament, it was broadcast on the television and they ripped the piss out of Mr Salmon for asking the question. I think it was Mr Salmon that asked the question, yes. Um, a, they ripped the piss out of him because there was only something like 8 or 11 MPs for, Scott, for the SNP at the time. They never thought it would get to the point where the SNP had the biggest amount of MPs. The only reason why we didn't walk these last two times is because it wasn't specifically in the Westminster Parliamentary uh, Manifesto. This time for the Westminster Parliamentary Manifesto, it will be number one on the agenda. So, that's one thing I did want to talk about um, today. And that is the march and rally in air, absolutely fantastic. Um, people shouting at Dave, me in the street, Davey, how are we going to take our sovereignty back if people are sovereign? Aye, the people are sovereign. We'll take, our, we'll, take our, we'll take our sovereignty back from Westminster by official routes, through the ballot box. But if anybody wants to hang on and go to the UN for 25 years, anyone wants to hang on? and start raising court cases, just now, then, fine. What we'll do is we'll no bother putting it in a manifesto for the next 25 years while the International Court argues the toss, shall we? So sometimes you've got to call nonsense out when you hear nonsense. And I can specifically say the crap that was spoken that stage on Saturday was nonsense. Why? Because Sarah Sawyers, who is the head of Salvo, and Professor Mark McNaught of the Scottish Constitutional Research Group, have both made it clear on the Two Davies programme that there has to be a vote. So, if you want to affiliate with these, these, uh, these um, um, places like Salvo and Liberation Scott, and uh, especially the Scottish Constitutional Research Group, please do participate. And learn as much about the existing constitution because we're going to need that knowledge when it comes to writing the new constitution. But if anybody thinks that Salvo is the key to unlocking our independence, I can guarantee you right now, 
And I'll guarantee you I'm not wrong. You're right. That isn't the route. If we're going to go through the international courts, Davy will be in his box before we get near a ballot box. Simple as that. And anyway, who's going to take the case to the UN for us? Go and read the rules and who, how this works. A third party nation would need to go on to the UN and say, hey, what is the, what is going on in Scotland here? It's not fair. It's no democratic. Um, a, I will straightly, I'll put this one up. Sarah's now resigned as an ALBA, uh, an ALBA party member. All right, we so. Salvo is supposed to be non-political. It's supposed to be looking into constitutional matters. But I might want to take a look at the 1998 Scotland Act while I was at it, because so far it's been looking way back in the 1600s. It hasn't been looking at superseding acts since. You can't make assertions about something unless you have the whole picture. And the 1998 Scotland Act was specifically designed to limit the use of the Scottish Parliament's use of the Scottish people's sovereignty, meaning that your MPs still carry your sovereignty. The way it has the way it was prior to the evolution, the MPs borrow the sovereignty which we lend them and take it to Westminster. So, as I say, the work that's been done at Salvo, the work that's been done at uh, Liberation Scott, the work that's been done at the Scottish Constitutional Research Group, all valuable stuff. All valuable stuff, as I say, but we'll go a wee bit deeper into it tomorrow, because this isn't really a programme, I'm just about to wind this up, but I didn't want to let everybody do my note coming on. Okay. I didn't want to let uh, be no coming on, because I didn't have time to put a notice out on Facebook and YouTube to tell you it was cancelled, so I thought the best way to do it is come on, talk about the good fun that the march was on Saturday, and remind people that there's only one way to independence, and that's through the ballot box. No other route. We live in a 21st century democracy. There is no other route other than the ballot box. And that means that the next Westminster election, hold your nose if you want independence, and put your cross in the SNP box, because the international community We'll be watching the SNP and the SNP alone. Simple as that. You see, we will be covering this again tomorrow. We'll go a wee bit deeper into it. We'll talk a wee bit more about muscular, um, muscular unionism, which seems to be what Westminster thinks is going to be the answer here. But we'll talk more about it more as I say. All right. So, as I say, the work that Sal was doing, the work that Liberation Scots did, the work that the uh, Scottish Constitutional Research Group did, all wonderful stuff. And it doesn't help to have another iron in the fire. But it is not the answer. There is going to have to be a vote. No matter what anybody's trying to tell you folks, there has to be a democratic event. There's no way around that. That's the facts. That is the facts. Simple as that. And as the Supreme Court has limited the only route to a Westminster election, it looks like that's the way we're going. Um, but as I say, you don't have to believe me in this, this stuff, folks. We all know about the claim, right? We all know about the Scottish people being sovereign. We all know we have been embedded in our law. Guess what? The 1998 Scotland Act's embedded in the law and on it. Supersedes the whole fucking law here. Well, the work they're doing in digging up the history, digging up the old constitutional traditions which have been hidden face for 300 years, that's the value in the work that these groups are doing. Because that way when we come to write the new constitution, we're not going to be breaking our own bloody law, Dana. All right. <laughs>